Hello. Right, I really hope that uh, technology is working and you can, uh, you can hear me. So um, I'm going to play some acoustic songs and hopefully you've all found the link and you've come at the right time. Um, I think this is being streamed on the Pineapple Thief Facebook and my Blue Sword Facebook, so I'm going to do my best to look at all the comments if anyone has any. Um, I've also got someone downstairs who's going to WhatsApp me the best ones, I hope. So, aha, uh -huh, right, I can see. Hello from South America, great. Hello to you, hello Fred. Two Freds, both Freds that I know. Right, anyway, less yak, more songs. Now, why am I seeing a spinner? Now, is anyone else seeing a spinner? It's all looking like it's frozen. Let me see. Has everyone, has, is, is, peop, is the video working? Because for me, I'm just seeing. Oh, it hasn't frozen. Right, I'm going to play a song. Okay. <laughs> right, so this, this song was um, the first song that I wrote when we signed to K-Scope back in 2000. We actually signed in 2006. Um, it's called Shoot First. So I'm gonna for the for, for the however long this takes I'm gonna I've got a, I've got some things down here that you can't quite see a looper pedal and bits and bobs that I shall bring into the fold um, as we go but this one I'm gonna keep simple. Oh, I've got an idiot sky right, Bruce. Don't forget two before you start a song. And one of the things I got to do is push this button. And I've got to push that button. Right, take three. <laughs> right, take four. I've got to actually plug the blinking thing in. Okay, just ignore that little bit of a amateur hour. This is called shoot first. gonna hurt the blood
soul in a beautiful world, but a world was left behind. Now, now my, my video is still stuck. Can my assistant downstairs just confirm that it's working? Yes. She says yes. My assistant. So, oh, and also Steve, my keyboard player, says it's working. He'd definitely tell me if it sucked. Actually, he hasn't told me that yet. I haven't given him a chance to yet. Right. Yeah, it's not stuck. Okay, so what's going on? Anyone got um? Any got anyone got anything they want to talk about? Yes, and yeah, I worked very hard to um, get the audio in stereo. So I hope you're all listening with your headphones or some nice speakers to get the full effect. Now, oh wait, 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 wait. What was that song? So that song was shoot first. Um, from our Tightly Unwound record. And like I said, that was a, the, the track that that we actually signed to K-Scope. I wrote for, for the first song that I wrote and they heard, and it was the first single um, that we put out. God, that was how many years ago is that? Blimey. Long to, I've been on, we've been on K-Scope for donkey's years. So, um, yeah, so, ah, oh, right. Yes, it reminds, m reminds you of this great gig we did in Holland. Let's hope that we can get back to doing gigs as soon as possible. Um, I'm supposed to be playing Prognosis Festival in September. You know, fingers crossed um, that, that that does happen. So um, now my assistant downstairs, because these comments are shooting past, and my assistant, who is downstairs, has said she would WhatsApp me. Oh, a bit reverby. She would WhatsApp me some questions. Or some comments. What do people want to talk about? Anything? Anything? Any questions? Where's the bell? There's no bell here. Gavin's not here. So I haven't got the bell. Although I still have the, the fear that the bell is going to go off when I make a mistake. But bear with me. I'm not going to make a mistake today. Now, let's do another song. Because my assistant hasn't sent me any questions. Typing. I'm not reverb. I can't be reverby. So this this next song I'm going to play. Um, would I play the? Ca yeah, of course I'd play the cavern. I'd love to play the cavern. On a solo tour, yes. Well, I was talking to John, um, the, our bass player, who we go out with to do my solo stuff, and. Um, we are very keen to do lots of little venues like that, sort of small, intimate, I hate to say that, intimate venues um, that, um, I don't know. It would just be nice to get out. I mean, I don't know about you, Lark, but I'm desperate, really, <laughs> for some human interaction. I mean, this is that, I mean, it's forced me to do this. I've never, never had to do anything like this. I would never have done this if we weren't all confined to our quarters. So there's, you know, it's a good thing that I'm doing this, but it's a bit weird because I can't see anyone. I'm so used to standing on stage and seeing people, every single last one and they've all your expressions, which is sometimes a great thing, sometimes, you know. But, um, but hold on, hold on, right. So let's do another song. This next song um, is actually from my first solo record. And I remember I did this, I did this um, five years ago nearly five years ago, when Trump got elected, the day that Trump got elected in the States, so it's four years ago, um, when I was opening for Stephen Wilson doing this acoustic set. And I had real trouble with my visa, so I missed 
the big shows in LA and San Francisco, which was a real bummer. Um, so I landed and I drove all the way to Phoenix from Las from um, LA. And this song just involves turning tuning this E string right up to there, which is <laughs> yeah. And it's really not designed to do it. So it's terrifying to turn this knob. And what happened in Phoenix was that it broke. And then I was like, so I'd driven all that way, flown all that way, rushed to the venue, and there I was with just no one to help me. My guitar in tatters. But, you know, you, you get through it. That's what you're paid to do as a front man. That's what you're paid to do. Get on with it, which I, you know, yeah. In the meantime, oh, someone's saying, this my assistant saying, someone's asking for Private Paradise, and, she's, and my assistant is saying, please don't do it. Anyway, I did it once, and that was a special one time only. Private Paradise is the first song that I wrote in 1999, so there is a good reason that I won't play that. So, um, yes, the, when is the next Pine of Thief album coming out and is there a 5.1 mix? I, I just wish I could turn the camera around because you can see I've all my um, surround speakers are set up and I'm literally mixing the 5.1 now. So it will be out um, in high-res DTS HD on Blu-ray So um, and it's sounding great, obviously. Um, and... Um, and we finished the album, and I'm very, very pleased with it. So there'll be more info on that soon. I think that the we're, 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 the, f the four of us will do another um, another chat, like we did the other day, um, when when we can tell you more. Um, and yes, we are planning to do some more solo gigs. What songs are about my assistant? Practically all of them. No, 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 that's not true. Right, let look. I don't want to listen to me yak on. I think it's time I played a song. Right, so this is called Willow Tree, and now th this is going to use my looper pedal, and I've got a big thing here said reset looper. So the idea with the looper pedal... So the idea is that. Let so me just idea, reset that. So the idea... The idea, the idea is not to hear that. Right, let me demonstrate. Right, so the idea is I do this. That's it. the idea you gotta get the timing absolutely spot on otherwise it's an embarrassing disaster and the other thing you got to do is remember to reset it because I could be doing a really delicate thing and then all of a sudden I do this oh shit so that won't be happening so this song is called Willow Tree once I've pushed the button Nine years ago we were all dressed to go On with our lives, with a burning inside And this willow tree that you gave to me Left to die in the sun When the rains would not come And it's a long way to come It's a long way to come Look at me now as we 
fathom out how we survived the onslaught that the ages had wrought and this willow tree that you gave to me it survives and remains through the wind and the rain cause it's a long way to come to regret yeah it's a long way to come to regret yeah it's a long way to come yeah it's a long way to come error with the shaker there but so yeah that was willow tree um, so now I can tune this back down to where it belongs so um, yeah so oh yeah the final thing yep that can be arranged Okay. <laughs> yeah, Ed Sheeran is the king of the loop pedal. Now, now then, well, I'm just trying to see all these comments. Is there a chance you can play our shelter? Of course, why not? I'll play anywhere. Um, White Mist, yeah, that would be awesome, but I think I need a band for that one. Um, um, did you teach yourself to play? <laughs> 
Is that a loaded question? Did you teach yourself to play the guitar? Now, yes. Yes, I did. Um, I didn't pick up a guitar till I was 14. Um, I didn't really come from a very musical family. And um, it was only when I met some friends at school that I got introduced to to music and the guitar. And I remember saying to my friend, that, oh, God, it's too late. It's too late to pick up an instrument at 14. And uh, he said to me, it's never too late. Because he was already grade eight everything. And I was like, oh. it took me... Six months to figure out how to tune up the thing. I had a Burt Weed and play in a day, so it was a real, like, cheat G. It's the only thing I could do for about, well, goodness knows how long. And, um, and but unfortunately, because I was never really taught, I have got some pretty bad um, uh, habits. Like, I don't hold the plectrum in the, you know, the required way. I, if our touring guitarist, George, George Marius, now he is technically... You know, he must be just technically perfect, that guy. So if you want to know how to play guitar properly, then find George Marius out on uh, Instagram and um, get a Skype lesson off him. Um, I did try, but I was just too lazy to, uh, to do my lessons. So, but yes, self-taught. Um, that was a bit of a ramble, wasn't it? So I am going to do another song. That was great and very funny. What, the song? It was so bad, it was hilarious. Mm, yes. This is funny, it's, it, I'm looking out, I'm looking out at my studio and I'm seeing imaginary people looking at me, so it's all right, I'm just trying to get my headspace into actually doing a gig. Um, right. Now, and I've also got a bit of an earth problem. So this next song I'm gonna do um, is it's an old one, actually. Oh, who said Clapham? Right, yes. I, I, you know what? If I do this again, I'll do Clapham. It's, it's a, I, forgot, I forgot I wrote that, but I have no idea how to play it. I haven't played that in a long time. Um, so, no, I promise I will do that. Yes, we have got a name for the new album, and I'm not allowed to tell you what it is. K-Scope will come and shoot me if I tell you anything. Um, but, yeah, we've... we've it's. it's it's all pretty much done. We, we, and um, there will be a nice big special edition um, as, as usual. And we're hoping that things will be... Who knows when they're going to get back to normal, but we're hoping that people will be able to go to record stores. That's my dream, is to go back to a record store and mingle with people and buy stuff. Um, um, I'm hoping that will happen by the time the record comes out later this year. Um, right, so. Oh, yeah. Fend for yourself. I forgot about that one. I, okay, I'm going to make a note. Um, I'm going to make a note of Fend for Yourself and Clapham. I've just seen a message from Mark Harris. Now, Mark Harris is a guy I used to work with before I went professional. Um, uh, as a musician, I worked in an office with this guy called Mark Harris, and he'd actually put a single out, um, which is quite a pineapple rarity. It's called Sherbert Gods. Um, I'm not sure how many we made. Anyway, he lives in New Zealand now. Uh, you're allowed out and about, aren't you, Mark, now? New Zealand? Aren't you? It's, it's off your shores. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm jealous. Right, I'm going to do a song now. Um, let me just check that I have erased my looper. Oh, you idiot. I've gone and pushed the button. Stop. Stop. Clear. Right. Um, I'm going to do another song now. This is a song, actually, another uh, fairly old Pineapple Thief song um, that I play quite a lot um, from the Variations on a Dream record. This is part zero. I'm not entirely sure how what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> what I shall do, I'll have a think as I'm playing in terms of looping bits and bobs and... Um, oh, ah, uh, right, hold on. Can you just bear with me a second? I've just realised I've left a critical, a critical instrument, implement. Um, I'm just going to dis disconnect myself. This is it. This is the thing that I need, um, because I've now got this thing. Is it on? Yes. 
Right, which guitar do I want? I want this one, which is my Taylor. Or one of my Taylors. Oh, they're all Taylors, actually. And... And, um, okay, yeah. Oh, Shed a Light, yeah. There's loads, isn't there? There's loads I could have done. I just didn't think about all these. Um, remember Us. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to do Remember Us. Um, as you can tell, I can't, no recollection of the chords whatsoever. But, okay, I'm going to make a mental note. Shed a Light, Clapham, Fend for Yourself, Remember Us. The next time. This is part zero, anyway. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Always a problem how to end a looper song. Anyway, I hope you like that. Was this guitar loud enough? Let me know. Right, so... Um, ah! Tightly wound, yes. Shed a light, uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Definitely gonna do shed a light next time. Now, um, did uh, drop out for anyone else? I had a complaint that someone went, got, I got lost for a minute. Right, I'm going back to my assistant who's um, WhatsApped me. Let me just get my glasses. Right. Um, lots of people asking for Clavin, yes. Yeah, what's my favourite Catatonia song? Oh. Well, actually, you see, I'm wearing a Catatonia T-shirt in um, celebration of their new record, which came out last week. And um, number six in the German charts. Pretty damn good. Um, but, yeah, I... I toured with Catatonia. Um, they did an acoustic tour, and this is a T-shirt from that tour, and um, it was a really good, lovely experience. Wonderful people to be around, and uh, all those songs that we did on that set, I, you know, I, I, I love them all. I couldn't pick one. Um, please come to Greece. Yes. What did I do before I went pro? Oh, you don't want to know. I'm not telling. It's trade secret. Um, all I can tell you is if you're making a living out of writing songs, um, it can take a while. Um, but no, I'm very lucky, we're very lucky to, to be professional. And we were also really lucky that we toured before the world, um, got locked down. Um, I'd feel really sorry for the bands that had to cancel tours because I know how much money would gets lost. And the thing about touring is that it's the band that if they make money great the band makes money but if you lose money then it's the band that loses money so um and also i'd like to just um shout out to all of our crew um our, the, most of them are italian apart from our front house um engineer and our merch guy um and they've been locked down for a long time and the thing about people that work in live music um is that they really are stuffed it's just not happening their income has disappeared completely so uh um, I just really hope for their sake that it, that it, everything gets back to normal ASAP and we get our butts on tour um, um, as we have uh, scheduled to do um, later this year. So uh, this, yes, this next song, this next song I will dedicate to um, our crew and the crew ev everywhere who um, are suffering at the moment. Anyway, whew, enough of that seriousness. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to tell you what I did before uh why why do i play taylor's i am well the truth is that when i did your wilderness i don't know how i had a contact at taylor um through guitarist magazine and um my friend um darren from god sticks and they loaned me um these two lovely taylor's here and here that i'm playing um for the tour and they actually forgot they loaned it to me and i didn't obviously didn't tell them that um, they'd forgot until recently I got an email and they told me they, they wanted them back and I said well oh, please I can't I can't give them to you back they're pretty knackered now and um, they've been on quite a few tours so um, I bought them. but I did get a good rate they did give me a nice nice rate and this one is especially nice um, this is my 12 string baritone 12 string 8 string baritone acoustic which I'll be using later when we do when we do when I do something on my mind. Right, um, do I miss the orange box? Now the orange box is a uh, venue in Yeovil um, that was, that's someone I, I, I know, a guy called Ian Rogers, who labor of love, he set up this venue in this small town that I live in and he made it work. He got um, touring, big touring bands uh, came and played at this, at this venue. But like every small town, and I'm probably just as, 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 as guilty for not going out just to watch bands play. And when I started off, people would just go out and watch bands. Just, you didn't know who they were. They'd just go to a venue and just see who was playing. And uh, that seems to have died out a bit. And unfortunately, the venue um, died out with it. And uh, it was a real shame. And we played quite a few gigs there um, when we were coming up from 
the depths. Uh, and we were, we were in the depths for a long time. I mean, the Pineapple Thief was, um, we were very underground, but we always had this amazing following that just kept it going, that kept us fueled. We kept doing records, even though we couldn't make a living out of it and touring was difficult. We'd lose, well, we did lose a lot of money um, touring, but we got to tour around Europe and it was, a, it was worth it in hindsight. I have no regrets, obviously, because we're still here. Um, who was the artist that most influenced the, influenced you most? Do you know, I can't ever pinpoint an artist that has influenced me. I mean, I grew up listening to 70s progressive rock, you know, Camel, Supertramp, Alan Parsons, all that kind of stuff. But then when I went to, you know to college and university i was i got into grunge and smashing pumpkins and you know beck and all you know lo, lo, just different stuff um and when i sit down and write a song i don't ever think all oh, right let's do something like that or something it, obviously there's going to be stuff in your being that is going to come out when you write a song but when i'm inspired to write a song i just don't think about anything i just think about let's see where my fingers go um so that's my <laughs> words of wisdom for how to write a song. Just see where your fingers go. Right. Okay, right. I am just got a few more songs to do. Um, I don't want to waffle on for too long. Now this one... Um, this this one is we we, uh, we do on on our on our tour and this is the one that Gavin gets his bell out because I usually I don't make mistakes but it's quite a picky picky track and um, I quite sometimes I might just duff a string and then he'll ting ting his bell from from behind and uh, quite often, so it I mean it um, it's a delicate song and there I went there I am with the ting coming out and. I'm trying my hardest not to burst out laughing. So I will try. If I do make a mistake, all feel free to do a virtual ting, because I'm not going to hear it. Fill your boots. Right, um, OK, let me look at my idiot's guide. Have I pressed reset? I have now. Have I pushed the button? Uh, my glasses off now yeah okay let's see let's see what happens with this one um this one is called no man's land Lord only knows 
if you're happy now And Lord only knows where you are Look at me now in no man's land Waiting for the sun to return That was No Man's Land, and um, that's played on this Taylor because um, quite a few people ask me, oh, God, how the hell do you play No Man's Land? It's because it's got a weird open tuning, which is... which used to drive um, my guitar tech absolutely mad because um, he was doing all these ridiculous tunings and it goes really low, um, which does mess around with the intonation. And... but too bad when I'm writing songs if I can't quite get the you know if it's if it's a bit of a stretch I just tune the strings around it makes it easier okay um right I, I, I'm just going to do a few more um Right. Would I do another collaboration with Jonas? Oh, I'd love to. Um, Jonas is always too busy. Um, Catatonia have, um, have, have been busy for a long time now um, with their, their new album and their touring. So um, we keep saying, yeah, we'd like to do it. He just needs to get on a plane and come to my studio and we'll just make sweet music. Um, so never say never. Never say never. I would love to do it. Um, uh, my my, um, uh, how did you discover this kind of progressive rock magic? <laughs> it came from the cosmos. Came from the cosmos. I don't know. I was a weirdo at school. Um, it was in the eighties. Everyone was into Duran Duran, and I was into Alan Parsons' project. I mean, God, I was a complete and utter misfit. Um, but. You know, that kind of music. I mean, if you listen... The thing is, I, I, I always go on about the Alan Parsons project, but if you listen to it now, the the production on some of the records is is quite... How would you say? Light. You know, quite it's quite easy on the ear. Um, but uh, uh, there's huge influence. People are talking about influences, but the guitarist for the Alan Parsons project, the guy called Ian Benson, easily my favourite guitarist, probably him and Andy Latimer, but the way that he constructs a guitar solo is just magical um so so now i come to think of it if i sit down and 
work out a solo. And playing guitar solos is one of the biggest pains in the ass because you can't just pick up a guitar and go... Billy, 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 billy. You've got to actually construct a, 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 something that has meaning and that has purpose. I mean, when I'm jamming around, you'll see that I just go up and down, you know, you know just jamming. But if I'm writing something for a record, it takes me bloody ages, um, which is why maybe... On Dissolution, there weren't that many solos. There's a lot more on um, the new record um, because I basically said, Bruce, stop being a lazy little and play some solos. So I did. Um, tuning on Tear You Up, I can't remember. But it's um, it's on a baritone. Um, I've got it written down somewhere. Um, what is my favorite song to play i think it's the final thing on my mind mm, i think so and white mist and three thousand days i love three thousand days because because oh it's, it's not on there um because it's just a really good fun track to play live with the audience i've got a little kill switch that i do this thing on and i get to pose at the front of the stage and you know as you do as a front man that's the kind of thing that uh, that's what you do this for isn't it posing in front of people it's not for the music it's for you know for looking good on stage um right clearly clearly i am jesting um oh right okay i'm gonna do just two more songs just bear with me this one um is snowdrops and feel free to clap. I'm going to clap. So this song, if, um, if people don't know, um, when we play this live at the end, everyone claps along in 6-8. Some audiences are better at clapping in 6-8 than others. I find the Dutch are always very good at clapping in 6-8. Six, six, I think they started doing some weird like off beats at one gig as well that sort of threw me. Um, so, yeah, when I start clapping, I'm just going to imagine everyone who's watching this, and I hope people are still watching it, um, clapping along. Just watch me for the changes. Okay. Push the button. Day breaks your battered heart The sun tears your world apart And we will see it fall Yeah, we will see it fall Live each day in a photograph and we will join them all yeah we will join them all we are all falling snow so settle down oh just settle down
just settle down Oh, just settle down And I will slow your fall That is all Okay. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna think I'll, I'll probably just wrap things up now. Um, and um, oh, seeing all those claps coming through, I hope you did clap. Um, I'm gonna finish. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I found it quite strange. I really, I have enjoyed it, but I like talking to myself. Luckily, you know, as a front man, you're generally a narcissist, so you you do know enjoy these kinds of things time to yourself talking to yourself posing in front of the camera 
Um, so it's time to get my nice baritone out. I'm going to attempt to do final thing on my mind, um, and let's see what happens. So after this, I'm going to go and have a beer um, and put my feet up. I hope everybody um, is okay, and I'm really looking forward to seeing um, everyone when we hit the road and the world gets back to normal. Um, we will be coming back to everywhere and also to places that we haven't been. Um, it's not over yet, put it that way. So uh, this... It's the final thing on my mind.
Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed myself. Um, probably do it again. I'll try and learn some more songs. So um, anyway, thank you everyone for all your support. And like everyone is saying, stay safe, stay healthy. And um, I can't wait to see you in front of me again soon. So goodbye. Thanks very much.